So I do not support the increase in, in uh, commercial property taxes or residential talk property taxes. Stephen Bohorkas with SJ Associates, and I'm here at City Hall. And today is the day I am here with Kevin Lincoln. Kevin, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks, Stephen. Good to Appreciate see you. Appreciate this opportunity. All right. Kevin, you're running for the mayor of Stockton. I am. And you are the number one contender yep. for the mayor of Stockton. Big change. Big changes here. Speaking of changes, um, four questions. Sure. Four questions only. Um, in regards to the coronavirus 19, which is on everyone's mind, in terms of public health, um, what is what do you think uh, the city's response has been so far in regards to the coronavirus 19? Yeah, I've been proud of the people's response in the city of Stockton, okay. of how the nonprofits, these different CBOs and organizations have come together uh, to help address and meet the needs, uh, whether it's providing uh, extra. Uh, personal protective equipment um, or it's to help to meet the increased uh, food insecurities that have happened as a result of COVID-19. Mm -hmm. um, I'm very proud of the people in the city of Stockton and how they've responded to it. Outstanding. Yeah. Outstanding. Okay. Um, second question. Sure. Um, what's your take on distant learning in schools? That's something that's very brand new right now in the United States. Um, and of course, the possibility of reopening schools, um, and even, should politics be even be involved in the schools? What's your take on that? Yeah, politics shouldn't be involved in in, in schools. Okay. Uh, this is the schools; they have their board, their trustees, right. and um, you know they've been elected to to do a job to look out in the best interest uh, of the students. Right. I think when politics gets involved uh, with schools, uh, the one the ones that suffer the most are our children, right? And those are the ones that we need to be investing in the most and making sure that we're doing everything we can to look out for their best interest. You think, what's your take on uh, distant learning? Sure, sure. Personally, I, I pursued all of my educational uh, goals uh, from my associates through my master's degree, uh -huh. uh, distance learning. Right. But those that was with an establishment that was, establishments that were designed, right? And they were prepared for that. Distance learning has impacted our communities tremendously. Um, no matter what part of town you're from, uh, no matter what your socioeconomic status is, uh, every, this distance learning has impacted everybody. And uh, I applaud you know, our schools, our districts, uh, for, for working really hard uh, to, to make the necessary adjustments uh, that, that they've had to make in such a short, compressed amount of time. Right. And with that, there's been a lot of moving parts. Every day, every week, there's a guideline that's changing and they're constantly having to adjust. And our families are having to adjust right. as well. And so I would say to, to Stockton, um, hang in there. Um, you know, let's, let's work together. Uh, let's communicate the needs that are out there. Uh, the parents who um, are, are experiencing difficulty difficulties right now with trying to navigate distance learning with their children. Uh, let's communicate, you know, to your, your elected trustee members and your districts and your teachers and, and let's identify those challenges so quickly so that we can come up with the proper solutions right. moving forward. Okay, all right. Um, third question. Sure. Um, the property tax, that's been on a lot of people's minds lately, and uh, the increase of in property tax. Are you for that or are you against it? I'm not, I'm not for it. You're not for yeah, it. that's right. That's right. I do not support the increase in, in uh, commercial property taxes or residential talk property taxes. Okay. Well, thank you. <laughs> a lot of people were asking that question and wanted to know. Sure. Thank you for answering that. And of course, the fourth and last question, sir. Um, Homelessness, uh, that's still a big thorn in our side. Uh, now that's across the, the country. Any of your thoughts of a possible solution to the homeless crisis here in the city of Stockton? Absolutely, absolutely. So we know that our city needs healing. Yeah. And uh, we know that crime and, and poverty continue to plague us. And we also know that our homeless population is continuing to grow. Yeah. And so we need immediate action now we need to take next steps and we need to meet action now we can't wait five years we can't wait 10 years we can't wait two years right. we have to start to implement those measures that we could provide the necessary assistance to the homeless in our community so that we can help them get the healing that they need get back up on their feet 
and uh, you know make begin to contribute again and, and make a positive difference not only in their lives but in the lives of, of others. We know that here in Stockton in San Joaquin County, uh, almost 70 percent of those who are experiencing homelessness, um, they're dealing with uh, mental health yeah. issues right. or substance abuse, and so. In addressing homelessness, we have to identify, we have to look at the root cause of homelessness. So that means that as we, as we expand our shelter capacity, our current shelter capacity, as we, as we um, stand up bridge shelters, low barrier shelters for our homeless community, that means we have to provide the centralized resources for them as well to help meet those needs, right? So that they can get the true sustainable healing that, that they need and we can begin to move our community in the right direction. We can't forget that our homeless population, those who are, who are impacted by homelessness and that are unsheltered, that they are people. Yes. And we, we have to be compassionate as well. But at the same time, for those homeless that don't want to uh, proactively uh, and take advantage of, of the help that's being offered to them, well, you know, they're, they're, if they're breaking the law, then you know there should be consequences as well, right? And so, you know, that's get, providing the proper shelter for our homeless, providing the right resources for them as well to address the root cause of of why they're homeless, and then and then having the housing for them to transition to as well. All that is is equally as important. So we can't isolate our focus in one particular area when when addressing homelessness. We have to lay everything out out on the table. And we have to say, what is the next step in our community right now that we could take to effectively address homelessness in our community? And we have to be able to measure that progress as well. And we have to be able to make the necessary course adjustments along the way. But bottom line, we have to make decisions and we have to do things moving forward in this city that are, that are in the best interest of all Stocktonians. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for doing this interview. Appreciate that. Thank you, Hank. Good luck in your race to the mayor of Stockton. And uh, this is Stephen Bohorkis with S&J Associates saying thank you for watching.